Ah, uh, yeah, what up, anglers? It's Northern Scripture. What's good? We gonna go through this sloppy documentation of the Mossberg. <laughs> Subscriber comments influenced the naming of the bird, so that's the reasoning behind that. But, on to the lure. Nothing special going on here. I just used some of my favorite parts. Even though uh, none of really the front has anything to do, like the design of it has nothing to do with the back. So, on to the bird. I couldn't find any influence to draw off of other than a real bird. So, plastic wasn't going to cut it this time. So, I glued some wood together. And then carved it down into shape, sanded it all nice so that it was kind of symmetrical or as symmetrical I could get it. And then I took foam and it was almost like a fabric foam and I wrapped that around to form a basic body shape, held it in place with some thread, a little bit more bundled up and shaped the head, sloped neck, just to make sure that we held uh, the good rough shape for the formation. Uh, the back, we're going to add a lot more in when we attach the tail, but we just left that slope down for now. Just not to get too carried away with uh, how much I was going to bundle up there. I wanted to make it slim and sleek still, the body. Knowing I had a lot to attach with feathers, I didn't want to get too carried away, so it was really hard to start with the beak and put that you know, was the first thing I put on because when I actually make it, I have to start from the back to the front. So I found it hard to keep everything in proportion size wise, building it in that way. But here I just notched out the bottom of the beak. The wood extends back to about here on the hook and two prongs on each side so that I wrapped the thread around and glued it in place nice and tight. So the hook actually sits up about 50% up into the carved beak. So it should uh, hold steady and true. So I wanted to make sure that I kept everything in proportion when I was cutting all the feathers and gluing things together. So I drew up a mock little design of the basic formation of the bird I was going to follow and trace out the body. So I knew the size of everything and just drew out a rough shape of the wings. So while I was cutting the feathers, I could match them up. So, like I said, I kind of missed a lot of steps. Um, because this is the first one I made, I really got in the groove of things and got more carried away with creating than documenting. So we'll be missing the small steps, but most of it is stuff I've already covered in a lot of my other videos. So you guys already know this. But like the uh, bug edition, I've taken feathers in sets and glued them together and then lined them all up in a row and glued them all in a tail formation. I kind of held it in shape with my hands. It dries quick so it looks uh, pretty tight. Got the two patterns on each side which uh, took a lot of time to put together but definitely was well worth it for all the small detail design that goes uh, into this bird. Everything I found online was wooden and anything else that wasn't wooden didn't really look like a bird so I knew I had to go over the top for the first one because I knew I was going to share it. There's no point in you know making it and then testing it for a whole year trying to figure out every little detail. That's no mystery and everybody loves some mystery. So here are the wings. The outsides and insides, this is exactly how I did the tail. So we're going to fit all of these scrunched up together on the wings. I may make a, a few extras just in case I need to fill in more. But these are nice and flat, so while they're lined up on a wing, I'm not going to have too much drag, I hope. But that was the simplest way I found to get good design. These ones, I haven't attached the brown on the bottom yet. I uh, attach them in two sections. The first time I go, I attach the front side and let that dry. And then I'll attach the back side separately 
and let that dry, and then I attach the two sides together, <laughs> which is time consuming, but it keeps it nice and flat, and it's not too puffed out. As you can see, it's very concealed together, and when they're all bunched in in a row, it helps everything stay in place as well, so I thought it was key to achieve the design and the pattern in that fashion. Now that I've already made this first one, I'm confident that the next one will be a lot better. For me, this one was all about trying to just figure out how the design was going to pull through the water. So durability wasn't top issue. Although, as you can see, this section back here is somewhat complete. And there is a layer of glue, so it is very solid. I doubt a tooth is going to puncture it, so it might lose feathers. But we might also have some issues with the wings. We'll see what's up with that. You guys can decide. Leave some comments what you think, how durable, or how wrecked it's going to get. I definitely got to test it, whether or not a fish will be caught during the testing process. Well, that remains to be seen. But if it happens, I'll document it. And I'm also going to get some uh, in, a pool, in the pool video to make sure with underwater action to share with you guys so you can see what's going down but we just uh put some more foam here on the tail like i said earlier to bunch it up make sure that the tail is sticking up so it kind of looks accurate trimmed the access off the back to make it flat so that when i attach the feet and a little bit of a fuzz on the back for the underside it kind of tucks in nice and tight so we don't want to bunch things up too much. We want to keep the detail nice. So you can see the foam. It's not there's not too much, and neither is the fabric, the rubberish fabric, very thick. So the weight is still very low. The hook probably weighs the most, and then I'd assume the beak. I was weighing things. I don't remember what it weighed though. All right, moving on. We've uh, jimmied up some legs. And that was pretty much just a little bit of pipe cleaner. I burned off all the hair, wrapped the thread around it, and then glued all along the thread to hold nice and tight in place. Although up at the joint, I did not glue it, so they are adjustable. You can move them up and down and around. I also shaved off a little bit of the ends of the claws to expose a little bit of the wire. Not sure if that's the best idea. If it's going to rust in time or whatnot, but it definitely looks good. It gives a little claw look. But we also got a little bit of white fuzz in there to fill it in as the undercarriage. Not too much. Can't see it from the top. Definitely want to keep it nice and slim. But it still looks good. So we'll move on. Wrap up this body here. So I kind of skipped forward. It was uh, complicated, I guess you could say, to wrap around. This is probably about three layers wrapped up, starting from the back to the front three times. And then I stopped where I was going to attach the wings and attach them here. So this will be the center body because I don't want to go in and attach the wings later after I've gone up to the head because that'll just make things more difficult. So you got to get just the wing structure in place. Skeleton, I guess you could say. And then I'll move past that and come back to the wings later. But you can see there's uh, three sections back here. All wrapped tight. So you got your underbody and your upper. A little bit of beige. Separate from the white by the feet. To kind of make the feet stand out even a little bit more. And it was uh, just trying to keep accuracy to the photo I was working off of. But uh, you can see though the head is a lot slimmer than the body because things, they look a lot more bunched up when the feathers are on there. So we'll have to see what it looks like when it's wet. How much it slims down like a wet dog, but I got a small little diamond detail I added in there on the back to uh, pop it out a little bit. Make the tail kind of do its own thing. Make it look separate from the back. It's got a lot of good stiffness too, so I'm sure that when it's pulling through the water, that'll 
do something. <laughs> what exactly? Uh, we're going to have to see. But I think that's the great part about this is definitely feel like I'm swimming in waters unknown. And anything and everything could possibly happen. So I'm pretty excited to see what goes down. But these, uh, the wire here was just, again, the uh, thread wrapped around and glued to keep it in a basic formation. The joints are not glued, though, just to make sure that if I want to move it around later on with a pipe cleaner when I'm in testing so I can move the wings forward or back, that that'll fit out. So we've moved it all the way up to the head and kept uh, somewhat of a pattern here going with the white and the black stripes or dots, either or. And then at the top, I also did another diamond shape. You can't see it from this angle, <clears throat> but we'll take a look at that. So as you can see, I've gone around where the wing attaches just to make sure that that blends in tight. As I said, if I were to add that in later, it just looks all messed up. You wouldn't be able to wrap the thread around without messing up all the other feathers. So it was weird to plan out the order of how you attach everything, but the head was the most difficult to figure out when and how to attach it and not over, like overlay feathers that I already had lying down. So the fine detail here that I've pulled out of the back of the feathers is the fluff. I'm going to glue the, the ends that are tied around or wrapped around in the clamp and then hold them in place and use the thread that I have here as anchors to the bottom. So when I'm pulling the thread around and holding everything in place, it's not going to slide back. And then it will also glue concealed so the feathers will overlap it. As you can see, the feet are nice and stiff. It's on a popping. So uh, as we take a breeze through here, take a peek at everything where we're at i thought i'd share with you where i got my idea for this lure and that was a reoccurring dream i had or actually still am having but i'm fishing and i hook a fish and every time out comes a shooting bird out of the water and flies into the sky with my lure in its mouth and every time man i panic and i don't know what to do and i don't know why I always have this dream. It messes with me. I don't enjoy it when I'm in the dream. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's where I started thinking, you know, maybe I'll use uh, a bird idea and maybe that's what a muskie wants, man. A nice big healthy meal, a bird chasing a fish in the water. But uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> so we've gone a long way to making a dream reality here with a fake bird as bait. But you can see we got a nice pattern here kicking at the bottom. I think it looks tight. I mean, probably a little bit too much going on. It doesn't look uh, too much like an accurate bird, but it's a northern scripture bird. The moss bird. Yeah, yeah. But I think it looks good. How uh, the top and the, and the bottom are two separate patterns, designs. Really gives a good detailed look of accuracy. So we'll go in and uh, I'm going to put on what I'll call the face mask and then we'll make our way to the wings. The most intense portion, I'd have to say. So, as I said, <laughs> documentation is poor, man. I got carried away with being in the groove and when I get in the groove, I can't get out of it or else I totally mess with my shit. So, uh, yeah, we literally jumped from that last step to here and didn't record a thing and here we are. So like I said, I bundled up the, the fuzzy uh, part of the feathers and wrapped around the nose. As you can see, I trimmed there. It was all glued, so it's nice and tightly held there. And when I pulled back, I used a piece of thread to hold it back in place. And then I just dropped a piece of glue on the thread and held it. And then once it dried, I cut either end of the thread off and removed the thread. So from a side view it doesn't you can't see any thread there so it's kind of all just glued down into place by i guess yeah just the glue holding it <laughs> so 
So I'm pretty sure in time, you know, if I use this enough, it would maybe unglue itself. I'm not really sure, but like I said, this lure is definitely all about trying to figure out how with adjustable wings, we're going to get a lot of different action kicking with the spinner blade attached or without. It's like, that's like two different worlds. I don't even know what to think. I, it's overwhelming when I think about it, to be honest with you. I'm going to have to spend days at somebody's pool just pulling this thing through and moving the wings around in all different directions. But we'll see what's coming. As you can see, we got that nice big diamond pattern on the back. Looks pretty good. May have been too much. I never really know when it stops. Sometimes I get completely carried away. But since this is the first one, I don't think I got too carried away. I think that's uh, still yet to come when I start messing with the spinner blades up top and really make this bird chasing a fish. All right, so again, we've missed a shitload of steps, but you'll get the basics here. So all the feathers were glued, and then I started in at the body and worked my way out one at a time. I took thread and just wrapped it around once and tied a knot to hold it in place and then applied glue. So they're all just kind of like sitting here. They're, they're glued in place, but it's not like a permanent glue. It's just so that I can have everything lined in the way that I want, make sure that everything looks good and symmetrical because I could easily pop these off and relocate them. But it's good to hold everything in place so that I can trim up the ends right up to the wing skeleton. See how they're all sticking out past the wing so I can trim right up underneath to the wing. And then my plan will be to add glue and I will thread in between the gaps because there's no glue there. And I'll just weave with a needle and thread in between. You can see on this side a little bit of the green thread that's weaved just to hold it in place. I'll do that to get a nice, good, strong bond just in case, you know, catches a nice hook on a tooth and it gets some good pulls that's going to have a nice secure bond to the wing because the wing definitely has a good secure bond to the body. But that's how she looks. We'll trim that up. We're going to add a little bit of uh, that fuzzy stuff of the feathers in around on the top edge to fill it in, camouflage it up nice. We'll just wrap that around, hold it down with a clamp, and then add a drop of glue. I'm not sure how good that'll hold for durability on this edition, but it's not really the concern. So we've gone in and popped that out. I'm going to go ahead and assume that I believe it was Adam who wanted to call it something like a moss. The dirty moss or something like that. It definitely looks mossy. I didn't really expect that look to happen. But because the way that I, I put glue along the edge of the skeleton wing here. And then as you can see it all folds nicely on the head. But when I wrapped, when I put glue down and then held it in place over, you know, formed over nice and tight. It just didn't. The glue, when it soaked in, it didn't hold the same because on the head, there's no glue soaked into how it curves over. It's all held in place at the front, then at the back. And here you can see it's just, there's glue all along the edge. So as it's, as I pressed it down, it just kind of absorbed into everything, which really changed the look. Uh, <clears throat> the next one's definitely not going to come out looking like that, but I'm still happy with it. Like I ain't going to complain. Objective complete. I will still be able to test this and move these adjustable wings around because right up at the body There is no glue so they can be moved I'm also sure that in time maybe moving them too much. They'll break off So a later addition I'll try to make wings that are detachable So if I sell a whole whack load of these and wings get damaged you can purchase add-on wings but that's going to be that, man. This shit looks pretty tight. Let me know what you guys think, man. I got a lot of comments on uh, just the uh, intro video for the uh, bird. 
thanks a lot man i'm loving all those comments it keeps me stoked to keep this going really strong i've already started the next bird you might be happy to know that it is going to actually go for a legit kingfisher design as opposed to just doing free balling i guess you could call it which i did this time i've never seen a bird that looked like this before but you never know i do watch a lot of nature documentaries so i doubt it but it looks good man these wings are they gonna point down the wing the tail points up kind of counterbalance each other but the wings are adjustable so i'm just gonna move everything around and see how it goes i'll let you know so be sure to stay tuned yo check that shit have a seat yeah oh yeah what up cuz thanks for staying tuned i hope you enjoyed it maybe learn something or i influence you to do something of your own yo non-scripture keeping it real <laughs>